Yeah, thanks. So, right, so um, we will talk about, about um, um, Bayesian statistics and about STAN, which is a language for probabilistic programming and Bayesian statistics, as they call it. And, um, and yeah, so what is it about? So uh, first, what is probability? Right? Probability or probability theory usually talks about things which are random, which are uncertain, right? So for example, we may talk about the time I will wait for the bus to arrive. And, and then we may talk about probability distributions like this plot you see on the left, I, I think. So this plot you see on the left is a probability density saying, you know, how much time it may take for the bus to arrive. So, and, and, you know, if I ask, is it likely, is it, you know, what is the probability that the, bu the bus will arrive in maybe less than two hours? Then the answer would be the area between zero to two under the curve. So that is how we work with probability densities. We look for the area under the curve. So less than two hours means the area under the curve you know, smaller than two on the x-axis uh, for the waiting time for the bus. And then, so you see, yeah, with this probability density, it seems probable that the bus will arrive in less than two hours, but it could take more. And then what is statistics? So statistics is where we don't have one model about all probabilities for all questions we may ask we may have many models and we may need to infer. So maybe let us call it statistical inference is where we need to infer. So probability was one model for all probabilistic questions. So statistical inference means we have many models and we may wish to kind of pick one of them and reason about how good it is for a given data. So for example, for this kind of probability density, right, uh, it, is, it belongs to a family of densities, the exponential densities. And we don't know, maybe this bus is more frequent or less frequent. So we may not know what, what probabilities we have for this kind of bus I, I'm waiting for, but we may infer from our data which of these curves looks more likely or fits the data better if, you know, every day I wait for the bus and keep track of how much time I wait. So that is what statistical inference is about. So you see, we have a parameter. We have a parameter, in this case, it is this lambda. Lambda, this parameter says, which one is it of these many different exponential densities? And we don't know the parameter and we may wish to infer something about the actual true parameter, so to speak. That is what statistical inference is roughly. And Bayesian, statistics is where the parameter is random. So not only the time I wait for the bus is a random variable that I can talk about its randomness and the probabilities of it. Also this lambda I don't know is not just an unknown number, but an unknown number that I have some some theory about what, what values of it are probable. So I don't ha only have probabilis probabilities for my data generation process, but also for the parameter behind them. And then this means that the inference we do can have some notion of uncertainty, how certain we are 
or uncertain about our inference. So that is roughly these notions of probability, statistical inference, and Bayesian statistics. And in the 20th century, Bayesian statistics was not the main approach for statistics. And also nowadays, if you pick a basic book for intro to statistics, it may not be the main thing, the thing that people learn first, but it is becoming more, more uh, um, popular for good reasons. And one of them is computation, but also conceptual reasons make it kind of neat to be able to think about anything, about, uh, about anything as random variables. So how do we do Bayesian statistics? Um, we have software for that. And some of this software is, is of this form called probabilistic programming. And that means you can write your whole probabilistic story as a program. And that is what we're talking about today. And we'll see a little demo of that in a moment. And, but do we have any, any thoughts or comments so far? Did I say anything inaccurate or should, should I phrase yeah. that? Yeah. I think like before 20th century, the Bayesian, like the Bayesian approach was the main approach actually in statistics. And then it was like heavily criticized by the early statisticians in 20th century, I think so. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. But, but at least, at least, yeah. We, we have taken the uh, conditional probability from Bayesians, and it was like quite popular. And then everything changed with the frequentist approaches. Am I right? So you're talking about the early history of statistics. So I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, before before twentieth century before like these frequency statistics came up and the statisticians have uh, started to heavily criticize Bayesian methods. Uh, yeah, it was like actually a good, quite popular approach. And now it's just returning since we have to integrate a lot in, in Bayesian statistics and now computers can do that for us. Yeah, thank you. So uh, to be honest, I don't know this history very well. Some of these ideas go back really a lot of time, the, the foundations, the notions were a bit different back then, but yes, the idea that the unknown is random is, is not new and you're so right about it. And yes, this notion of conditional probability is central for what we do. And maybe we'll not talk about it so much today, but, but uh, maybe other times, yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. Um, so I'll share the screen so, again. If I'm not mistaken, Stan was named by uh, Stanislav Ulim, who has invented Monte Carlo, Markov chain Monte Carlo, for like, and he was using Bayesian approach for the calculations in his like nuclear projects. I didn't know that. Yeah, Stanislav Ulim, one of the fathers of the, together with Teller of the, how do you call it? You know, the bomb, not the nuclear, but the other one. So hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen bomb, you know, when they, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they used Bayesian approach in that, and then they switched to, and then they literally went to Monte Carlo and start gambling. And uh, yeah, that's where the Markov chain Monte Carlo wasn't introduced by Stanislav Ulim. So Stan is named after him. I didn't know that was the source of the name of Stan. Yeah, thank you so much, Yogi. Then, yeah, so, so um, yeah, really briefly, because that's not what the main topic of today, um, we'll have a short session with that. So first, so the idea of probabilistic programming is to be able to program with these notions of a parameter and then again, the process generating our actual data. And, there are a few existing solutions in closure, and but you know, it, in the mainstream of Bayesian statistics, you may hear many names of probabilistic programming systems. One of them is PyMC with a huge community around it, and another one, which is you know, comes first in a way, is Stan. These are the two main uh, platforms and ecosystems for probabilistic computing 
uh, probabilistic programming and Bayesian statistics. And it matters in this case to be uh, not only a, a, the, a piece of software, but actually an ecosystem with a community around it. And around these two, there, are, there is a lot of activity in the workflows, in the data visualizations, diagnostics, and all that, and that matters a lot. And today we'll talk just a little bit about STEM. Um, yeah, and just to mention, in Clojure, uh, Clojure has been uh, a, a research language for uh, probabilistic programming for quite some time, and there are old unmaintained projects of probabilistic programming in Clojure. Nowadays, there are two main ones which are maintained, as far as I know. One of them is in Fermi by our friend Generate Me, who is, you know, the person behind so many of the libraries we use. And in Fermi has really, really neat ideas behind it. And, and one day we can look into it again. And, and, and uh, there are also lots of examples in the notebooks here, really, really many examples that uh, uh, generate me uh, created uh, with this library. And the problem is that it doesn't have the most efficient algorithms for computing uh, the, the, the inferred probabilities. And so for some problems, mostly large problems with many parameters, it will not be a pragmatic choice. And the other problem is that we don't have an ecosystem around it as we have around STEM. And another work in progress project is GenCLJ, which is a port to closure of Gen, which is a probabilistic programming language in Julia and nowadays also in Python. It is by this probabilistic computing group in MIT and we have a few friends there and we are talking with them and it looks like a promising project. And again, yet it has the drawbacks with it mentioned with Infermi. So it does make sense, at least for now, to be able to use STEM from Clojure, as many people do from R and from Python. And there is an existing bridge to STEM from Clojure, but it doesn't work with current versions anymore. And I couldn't reach the, the author yet, I'm trying. And so for now we have this new bridge that might be somehow merged into the old one. And it is still work in progress. It is very fragile, but if anybody wishes to try it out, then we can try together and make it work in a more robust way to, together. So that is what I'll demonstrate now. And the use of, of STAN from Clojure with CMD STAN CLJ, that is the common naming for STAN libraries, if they use STAN from the command line, not as a C++, as a C++ library in process, but as a separate process from the command line, then they are usually called, called this way, like CMD STAN R, CMD STAN Python, and so on. And that is what we Sorry. Uh, by the way, Daniel, do you know if there are any uh, bridges from STAN to Java, maybe? I don't know. Um, um, no idea. But eventually, building a bridge is just a thin layer. You just need to connect to this other process, wrap it in a certain robust way so that it doesn't fail, to, and you know it, that things fail gracefully and also connect it to your data structures. Like if we have some you know, data frame structure, then it makes sense to connect it to that and so on. So it's not difficult to build a bridge. And um, this tiny project is an example. Uh, do you need something? Do you need anything in Java? No, I was just thinking that's maybe like the easiest way if there is already like some good library for Java, you can just use it. Oh, thank you, thank you. So in this case, it is not the easiest way, even though very often it is. So in this case, it is actually 
easier to write it from scratch. And at least, so I believe, so yeah, it is fragile, but let us see it in action in a little workflow. So, right. so um, here's what we have. So I'm waiting for the bus and my time for waiting for the bus is random with this kind of probability density as we see on the left. And, and I don't know what kind of curve it is. It could be something of this family of exponential densities, right? So I don't know, I wish to infer something about it. So this means this lambda, this unknown will be a parameter in my, in my model. And I need to, to have some assumption about the randomness of this unknown lambda, which is behind the generating process of, of my randomness waiting for the bus. So here is how you write it in the Stan language. You see this piece of code, which is just a string in this closure uh, namespace. By the way, in Emacs, you can edit the string as a separate buffer. So now I have it as a separate buffer and you can set the stand mode there. So you can have this highlighting and also you can validate code and all that. So it is kind of, can be a nice experience. So what do we have here? We have T, T is the time waiting for the bus. Lambda is the unknown parameter behind it saying, basically, basically it says how many buses are expected to pass per hour. That's the interpretation of lambda. If you are thinking in terms of this uh, Poisson process, uh, if you like this notion, we can talk about it another time. And then our model sa says, yeah, this lambda is created by random. And you need to say how it is created by random. I said by exponential density one, that's not obvious. Choosing this prior assumption is important. And I was a bit careless in this case, but you know, it is a big, an important part of the project, being clever in this choice of belief. And after we have run lambda chosen by random, we have T, the time I wait for, wait for the bus, going by exponential density, determined by this lambda, which is, you can think about it as the rate of buses arriving. Does it make sense? Or any, does anybody wish to say anything about it? Yeah, so, right, so we have this two stage process and that's our STAN program. And we can compile this program as a STAN model. And yeah, there is some caching. So it is a nice experience working with STAN and compiling these models. And then, you, you know, you can say, now I have data. Here is my data. My data says, I did wait for the bus and it did take one to the 10th of the hour. Not a long time, just one to the 10th of the hour. And you know, what, what can I infer from that about Lambda? So, so the idea of most Bayesian algorithms is that we can sample from the inferred probabilities of lambda. We can sample, we can simulate lambdas conditioned on the data. So that is how we sample from that. And, and um, we can run Stan and Stan has a, a good algorithm for it, uh, at least for continuous data. And and uh, the so-called NATS algorithm is the main one for those who care about it. And you can run a few of these random Monte Carlo, Marco chain, Monte Carlo chains uh, in parallel. So I'm kind of simula simulating a lot. And now we can uh, see the data we sampled and it looks like that. It looks like that, Never mind about the details, but we did sample like four chains and you can parallelize that. And you can also parallelize over the GPU if you wish to have many chains and so on. And, and then you can see these four chains we sample. So each chain is kind of independently randomizing our inference about Lambda. And you can see these chains agree for our diagnostics. It means that things are reasonable. You may, may need a few diagnostics to make sure that things are going well with your inference and having those four independent 
uh, histograms that look similar seems like a good signal for our model's behavior. And we see, yeah, lambda uh, seems to be most probably uh, around these numbers, right? And we can also compute the, the mean uh, or some statistics of lambda. So, you know, you can see for each chain, you can have some statistics. And, and so that's the expected, the mean, the expected lambda inferred by our model. So it is closer than to two than to one. So it means that uh, compared to the prior assumption, lambda is likely to, to be of a higher rate of buses than I assumed by prior. And that makes sense because the bus did arrive so quickly in my data, right? And, and yeah, and we can also, you know, have another other diagnostics plots that kind of show how these Markov chain processes progress. And these visualizations, we'll not talk about them so much now, but they matter a lot for making sure things go well. And there is a whole story around just visualizing the behavior of these things. So that's the current situation. I think uh, we'll not talk about it so much now because we have two other topics and we can talk about it later. And it is mostly an invitation. So if anybody wishes to discuss uh, that or learn Bayesian statistics, we can do it together. And it will also help improve the libraries. 